Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Fowley. And welcome to Podcast 1.2. We're going to learn all about the history of the atom. We're going to let data change this all. First of all, I want to define an atom, because I think I forgot to do that. An atom is the smallest part of an element that retains the properties of that element. So that's it. And that's my daughter, Marianne. Say hi, Marianne. Hi. Say hi, guys. Hi. Okay, so let's start. That's a bummer. I want to get to the part where we talk about Shark Week. Theories change over time. Now, not always. We've got really good stuff. Like, we're pretty sure that our at atomic theory is good. There's not going to be any deletions, perhaps an addition or something like that, but that's about it. Democritus was the first person to have the idea of an atom, but he was called the laughing philosopher, Democritus, because he'd never, he never, he didn't have any proof at all. He just made it up. And if you think about it, it makes sense. He said, have you ever thought of a brick? Can you cut it in half? Yes. Can you cut it in half again? Yes. Can you cut it in half again? Yes. Can you cut it in half again? Yes. And he said there's some point where you can cut, cannot cut it any smaller. And that part is indivisible. And the word for indivisible in Greek is atomos. So we call it the atom. Atomos. And if you think about that, I'll talk about it in class, how I don't really believe in the atom and you don't either. That's my hand. One, two, three, four, five. That's my hand. And I counted five fingers. So, um... Do you really think your hand isn't really your hand? It's a bunch of little balls. No. I don't think you think that for real, but you believe in the atom, and you should. Dalton had his postulates. This is what Dalton used. This was his proof where he's not the laughing Dalton. He's thought of as being a serious guy. Um, it's missing most of our common knowledge of the atom of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Atoms are indestructible. False. Atoms of the same element are identical. False. Compounds are a combination of atoms. True. Atoms are rearranged in reactions. True. And that's the basics of it. So, um, so there. Dalton's model was missing protons, neutrons, electrons, a nucleus, and then locations for all of these. Thompson found all atoms, sorry, had a bendable beam of light that would come out. So if you shot some electricity into an atom, every atom in the world would have this mysterious green light. Now, I don't really know it's green because I'm colorblind. That looks white to me. But still, no, it's... it's green because it's your favorite color. Okay, so what happens is this beam of light came out of everything, which means everything had this. All atoms have this. And they put a horseshoe, not a horseshoe, I'm sorry, a magnet yeah. right here, and the magnet would bend it away. So if it was a negative charge, it would bend it away. But if it was a positively charged magnet, it would bend towards it. So that meant, so what would that mean? Every atom, now Dalton thought an atom was this just a little ball here, and it was neutral and it was perfect and it was simple. But this means that it had parts. One part of it was negative because if you could get a negative part to shoot out, it had a negative part. And the rest of it must have been positive. So Thompson's model changed Dalton to have a positive and a negative part. And it was called the plum pudding model. Where you had a positive mass and negative electrons throughout the whole thing. That made sense. You know, there's a positive part, a negative part. They did know that atoms were neutral, so that's what it looked like. And this was a plum pudding. Plum pudding is basically pudding with pieces of plum skin in it. Isn't that disgusting? But that's in there. Um, you can think of it like a chocolate chip cookie for us. The evidence was all atoms have a negative part. that can be seen by a cathode ray tube. 
By the way, a quick sketch of a cathode ray tube would be incredibly helpful. If you look at that, don't be artistic. Just make a little tube with these things and a little magnet bending it. And that should be in your notes. Rutherford couldn't shoot through a wet Kleenex. Rutherford was another um, scientist. And what he did was he had this radioactive source, and he shot these things that were equivalent to cannonballs. And he shot it at what he described as, as wet tissue. And, and it was. It was exactly that. Gold can be hammered into such a small, 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 small layer that they believed it to be the thinnest substance on Earth at that time. And you could see through it. So if you'd had a gold coin, here's my gold coin with my face of Caesar on it. We'll give my eyebrows. Um, you could hammer that out and make it so thin that it could cover our entire classroom in a layer of gold. So Notre Dame, go Irish, um, have the Golden Dome. Well, and they really do have a golden dome, and the golden dome is covered in gold, but that layer is very, 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 very thin. So when they were shooting these radioactive sources, they were alpha particles. You'll learn what an alpha particle is in two podcasts. So these big alpha particles, and they shot through there. So if you shoot a cannonball through wet tissue paper, and it goes through a bunch of times, like, yeah, this is the dumbest experiment I've ever done. But if it bounces off on, like, the thousandth time you've done it, you go, hmm, wait a minute, uh... Why? You don't just go, oh, it doesn't matter. So bajillion shot, just a few bounced back. So that meant that atoms, if this is my atom, most of the mass had to be somewhere. And the way he described it is there's a little nut, a little nut in the middle of each atom. And that little nut is what made these bounce off. And they bounced off, so it had to be a positive little nut. So if, if um, what's his name, was right, um, this was Thompson. If Thompson was right, sorry. If Thompson was right, this is what would have happened. But this is the result they saw, so they came up with the idea of this. This is the actual result. This is good. This was the theory. We tested the theory, and uh, it bounced, so we had to explain it. Changed Millikan's, that's not Millikan, I'm sorry. Changed Thompson, Millikan was a different guy. Changed Thompson's cookie to a nucleus, positive nucleus, a small positive nucleus with electrons outside. Evidence, positive alpha particles. bounce very rarely. So very rarely gave us the small. Positive particles bounce told us the nucleus was positive. Bohr made pretty lights. So what he did was he shot energy at a bunch of different atoms. And some of the atoms gave some that looked like this. And other ones gave some that would look like that, which would be different for each one. So different atoms had different barcodes like this. So what Bohr learned was electrons are in one energy level or another and never in between. They make quantum leaps. Quantum is an all or nothing thing. So like if you're climbing a ladder, um, you're either on the first rung, the second rung, the third rung. You can't be on one rung or the other. Or if you're going to a train station, you're either going to ramp 9 or ramp 10. You can never do ramp 9 and 3 quarters. That just doesn't happen. Okay? So... What would have indicated that this didn't happen was that every color, if every color showed up every time, then what that would mean is electrons can go anywhere. But because they didn't, they're either in one energy level or another. That's what made it a quantum leap. And that was the evidence. Not full spectrum. Remember, spectrum would be the rainbow. Spectral lines. show one jump or another. Kind of like if we lived in um, tall buildings downtown. You either live on the 37th floor or the 83rd floor. You can't live on the 37 and 3 fourths. The current model is the quantum mechanical model. Rings are wrong. So people think that the atom looks like this because this is what you're taught in school and it's just in elementary school and it's just not true. It's helpful, but it's not true. 
Rings are wrong, rings are wrong. Electrons exist in clouds, and we can predict where they probably are. Quick look at what that would look like. These are what the clouds are shaped like, clearly not circles going around it. Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Momentum, mass times velocity, and position of a small particle cannot be known simultaneously. So think about this. The better you know where something is, so if it's like playing battleship, uh, you're close, but you don't know which way the ship is going. The better you know where it is, the less you know where it's going. Woo! And that's not a problem where we don't have better instruments. It's just a fact of existence. So electrons are in these clouds, and if they're in these clouds, they can dance around wherever they want. Dee -dee 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 -dee. They can even jump. Woo! I like the word teleport, but no one ever says that. Um, to different orbitals, but they're not in circles. So we call them orbitals rather than orbits. And that's just a picture. You don't need to know that picture, but it's up there. Um, things you should know, protons, neutrons, electrons. Location, nucleus, clouds, nucleus. Identity, oh, so protons cha tell you the identity. If I have three protons, I'm lithium. If I have five protons, I'm not lithium. Okay. Electrons tell you how reactive you are or what your charge is. And the neutrons tell you your stability or your mass. Uh, you know protons are positive, electrons are negative, and neutrons have no charge. Review. Data from experiments change our models and our views of the world. Remember protons, neutrons, and electrons. You should know all that. And you should know that we're all done with this one. So I'll say this to you. Toodles.